X Cub Part 7, we're on the home stretch here. Okay, we're out here the next day, making great progress on this thing. Next step, we're gonna start working on the windshield and this top hatch. Uh, but you can see, and I got these bars in here, the windshield support bars, they're just set in there. Uh, so we do have to epoxy these in. You can see they just set into the little, the little holes that are already there from the factory. And then they just epoxy up into the corners. So uh, these are carbon bars, they're pretty cool. But before we can do any epoxying and hitting the windows uh, in, we got to get rid of all these wrinkles. So in this area that we're working, you know, we're warming up our ceiling iron, the Hangar 9 ceiling iron, and then we have the Hangar 9 uh, uh, heat gun. So we're going to seal up all this area. Um, I got a little up here that I got to work on, so I'm going to have to kind of kneel on my stool to get up that high. So we're going to kind of go around and seal up these edges, just making sure they don't pull up when we hit it with the, with the heat gun. All right, let's get the gun out. Start doing some of the big surfaces here, getting rid of the big wrinkles. So the key to this, guys, is don't hold it in one spot. You wanna keep moving. So you do gotta get pretty close. And I always just go right to high. The key is keep moving. And you'll see it start shrinking right up. So we'll start right here, you can see the wrinkles. You'll see them just kinda of disappear. And you can overheat this too, so you gotta be careful. You don't, you wanna do it just enough to where it, there we go, you can see it starting to go away. There we go, they just kinda disappear. There we go, look at those, they just disappear. All right, everybody, I'm finally at a point here with the shrinking and, you know, just kind of sealing up edges where I'm working. But we're gonna do the window. Before we can do the windows, we gotta do the rods. So we got some five minute epoxy here. Just gonna dab it into these holes and then up in the corners and they just rest there, just decoration. But let's get some five minute mixed up here. Get those set in there. windshield support bars the epoxy is dry they look awesome we are gonna work on the cowl so we'll set the windshield aside so the cowl on the X cub is very cool so we actually use m3 by 15 uh, bolts these bonded washers I got from Home Depot these are awesome for cowls because the rubber washer is a, is bonded to an actual washer so we're gonna check these blind nuts and uh, make sure they all work. All those work, so make sure you check those. Now what we're gonna do, the way to do these is you gotta cut four strips here. This is just some cardstock. It's a little stiffer than normal paper. And what we're gonna do is you wanna tape here over that hole. So it's nothing Nothing crazy. It's really anywhere. See how now it goes over the hole, so we're gonna mark where the hole is here. Let's get the other ones on. A little 90 degree punch, and we're gonna punch a hole. It's kinda hard to see. Okay, same thing. So now we have on these piece of cardstock the exact location of these holes. We're gonna slip the cowl on now under these pieces of paper and those holes basically tell us where to make marks on the cowl. So let's slowly Get this on, and we want it under these paper tabs, remember. Paper, paper, okay, good. OK, 
Okay. So let's get it on there for now and just kind of set it there. All right, everybody, <laughs> after a lot of trial and error here, I think we, we got something we're happy with. So you can see the popsicle sticks, they're two millimeters, so you got those up there. You know, we just, we, we lined up the vents, so what visually looks good to us. This cowl spacing looks good on the spinner back plate. Now you remember the step from the cardstock, so it's pretty easy. And then we also taped the cowl in place, so the cowl is pretty much kind of set where we want. So now just make sure your tabs are sitting flush. Mark the exact location. All right guys, so we got our marks all set in the paper where the holes are. Let's take it apart and drill the holes. Hopefully everything lines up. All right guys, back to the cowl. So we're out here the next day and my mind was racing all night and just kind of thinking about how I mounted the cowl and I wasn't real happy with the fitment and how the crankshaft wasn't centered in the cowl opening. It was kind of down to the bottom. I've got it in the new position here. So let me take the spinner off and I've got it centered up now. So that's how I am gonna redo the cowl. And you can see the gap is still very acceptable. If Mary, you come over here, this is, this is a little loose just cause it's, you know, it's not bolted up, but I'll, I'll hold it. So you can see the gap, very acceptable. It's probably a three millimeter gap, but I am totally fine with that yeah. because I know it's centered now. So all you had to do. And here's the other thing, this reveal, this line here, it's a lot lower than we had it. So let's, go to what we had it at. So you can see I have the two bottom screws out. The top ones can stay because they're more acting like a pivot. Let me go back to where I had it. So we'll slide it up, yep. match, match up it. those holes. Now look at it. Look how high it's sitting. I don't like this. And then what I really don't like is that. Yeah. That wasn't sitting good with me all night. <laughs> so, so we're gonna fix that. Like I said, I'm gonna center this up, just like that. I'm gonna fill in the bottom holes with epoxy. And the cool thing is I'm using these, you know, the bonded washers. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna fill in that, re-drill a new hole, and it's gonna be just about a quarter inch off to the right. And this will completely cover the old hole. It's, it's gonna be sure. filled with epoxy, yeah. but the mark will still be there. So anyway, guys, we're gonna fix this and make it look a lot better. So I'm gonna take this off. We're gonna fill these two bottom holes first. So let's do it. So we got the cowl off. We're just doing the bottom holes. So fiberglass is real easy to work with. So we're just gonna scuff up the back here, just on the bottom holes. Clean that up with a little acetone, get the dust out. We just want the epoxy to dry, correct? And we're gonna do one hole at a time. Just wipe it with acetone, make sure it's clean. And we're gonna take a piece of blue tape, put it on the front, and just mount it, you know, flush. Basically you're making like a, a tape dam. And we're gonna let it, we're just gonna drop some epoxy in there, fill it like that. Mm -hmm. One hole at a time. We're gonna use five minute epoxy. Yep, let it dry up. Yep. All right, our friend Bob Smith is gonna help us with this project. Five minute Bob. All right, we'll let that one dry for a little bit and then we'll flip it up and we'll do the other one. We want this to dry level, so we're, that's why we're doing one at a time. Epoxy's all dry. Let's pull off the tape. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we got it nice and flush. So the bonded washer that we're using is gonna cover this old hole. And we can just, if there's any of uh, visible still, we can just cover it with a little piece of white paint. Uh, but let's uh, get this back on there. Moving on. Sorry, my head's in your way, man. All right. So let's get these top bolts in. So we want this right in the middle. 
looking good. And uh, we can show you the with the spinner here, show you with the spinner the reveal that we're gonna get. Now the manual says two millimeters. We've got about probably three millimeters and I'm totally fine with that. It looks fine, it really does. This reveal right here is only about, I don't know, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch so that looks acceptable. So we're going with that. Cool. So basically what happened is, you can see the hole we had to fill doesn't match up here anymore. Okay. Same thing on the other side. That still looks good to me. All right, so we got our new marks. You can see how close they were to the old hole we filled. And our bonded washer, there might be a little bit showing, but we can just dab that with some white gloss paint. Looks good, let's get it off and drill out our new holes. I'll see how good it covers up. Look at that. Completely? Yep. Yep. Look at that. So you don't have to do any. Completely covers up that old one. Perfect. Not even a problem. All right, all the bolt holes are in. Looks way better. It's very acceptable. I'm, I can 100% live with that. And then you got the spinner on there. Looks great. Looks good. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Much better than our first version, our first attempt. And as far as these bonded washers covering that old epoxy hole, you can see ever so slightly a little bit sticking out the side, but you would never even know it was there if I didn't tell you. So the cowl is done. Happy with that. Um, everything's looking great. Um, we're going to work on the window a little bit here, and then we came to the realization that we didn't have enough black screws. So we had to paint up some more black screws. So we're kind of letting these dry. Here's what we're using, if you guys want to know. We had to find these at a specialty fastener shop in Las Vegas. Uh, we couldn't find anything like this local. So there's what we're using. If you're interested, and then you just, we just painted them black with so a matte clear coat. Two by a quarter can head Phillips. Yep. Cool. So yeah, here's our black screws. They're all nice and dried. Did a matte black and then a matte clear coat. So we're just gonna put them all in the cup here. I like the screw versus the glue because I think it looks cool. You, know, you can see they've kind of done some simulated screw heads here. So we're actually gonna do the screws. We the same thing with the carbon cub. And also with the screws, you can take the windshield off if you need to get in there again. With glue, it'd be a little harder to do that. Kind of committed. Yeah. First thing we gotta do with the window though, you can see we just set it on there. So they give you this excess sheet here in the back. This is what goes on this removable section. So we're gonna take some of our blue tape and you gotta start taping this down. Kind of get it where you want it. Let me get a bunch of strips ready. And then we're gonna mark it at the top where we're gonna cut it. So kind of get this all sucked in. Looks good. Blue tape. All right, so we got that all taped down, guys. So we're gonna draw our line right here, right at the back of that white, right at the back of the white frame. We're gonna cut on that side of the black line. Okay. So we wanna cut, so the black line is on the waist side. Leave it on the waist. Okay. All right, let's cut off the back part of the windshield that we marked. So I got some more tape here to protect it from the ruler. It's also gonna help hold the windshield. Now, I want to cut on this side of the black line. 
because the edge of the white frame is right there. So we're gonna basically go right up to the edge of this black. Nice. There it is. Got a nice cut. A little bit of the black shine, but it should be fine. And then we'll just take some rubbing alcohol and wipe that Sharpie off. Okay, so there's the front. Let me get rid of this off the table and set that aside so that doesn't get messed up. So let's start taping this down where we want it. That looks good up there. So we got it pretty much set where we want now. I'm gonna remove this middle one. All right, everybody, we got our little pin vise out. We're gonna start drilling the holes and putting the black screws in. We're gonna start one in the middle and the bottom, one in the middle on the top. That'll kind of hold the windshield where we want it. And then we're just gonna kind of fill in the sides. So about right there. Okay. Now, if this is anything like the carbon cow, this is gonna be very easy to go through. So you don't have to push hard. The plastic is gonna be the hardest part to get through and then the balsa just it goes through so easy. There it goes. All right, let's put our first screw in. Very nice. Perfect. All right, so same thing up here. Let's go in the middle here. All right, so we're on the middle here on the 110 millimeter mark. Going into some nice strong wood. There we go. Looks good. Cool. Nice. So we got a center one in the top and the bottom. Now this thing should pretty much just, you know, it's gonna hold itself and now you just kind of fill in the gaps. Now we chose, I think I have enough screws, I'm gonna skip every other rivet. So you can see the fake rivets here, we're gonna do every other one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pretty, uh, pretty easy, the marks are already there for you. All right, so we got all the whole front windshield screwed in. Man, that looks cool. It's the exact same screws we used on the Carbon Cub. They work on the X-Cub too. Looks so cool. The best part about it is you can unscrew the windshield and get it off at any time. It is solid though. Like a drum. <laughs> all right, so let's do the top part. So here's the excess piece that we cut off. Here's the little magnetic frame. Basically, we're gonna just pop the frame back in and screw this down. Now this one's kind of weird because the frame is so small, so we only have room on the sides for screws. All right, but it fits really good. So let's put this on here. And there is a hole back here to align for a bolt, so you can choose to use a bolt also. Make it look somewhat even, it just sits on top. It's nothing too fancy. We'll just hold this until we get two screws in. So we'll go in the corner here. So I'm gonna do four. So one, two, three, four. All right guys. Everything's all screwed down. So we, um, like I said, only have, there's only enough room to screw the side panels on this top guy. So I think what's gonna happen is if any wind gets under it, it's just gonna pass right through and go out the back. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna be an issue at all. And if you're really worried about it, you can use the screw 
because there's a screw to, or a bolt, another M3 bolt, you can bolt it down too. But if you want to leave that quick, you know, the quick uh, access, you just uh, use the magnets. So, I don't know. Some people have lost these in flight, but I think they may have sealed it up too much. And that once the air gets under it, it acts like a parachute, but I left these open on purpose so the air can get out. So I don't know, maybe my theory will be good. Maybe it won't be, I don't know. We'll see, but well, no for now it looks great. <laughs> so everything's good. The windows are all done. Let's see what's next in the manual. All right, next step, but we're kind of skipping around the manual a little bit. We're gonna do all the side windows now. So pretty simple. Just grab your side windows and what you can see we do have to trim up a little bit around the, the frame here so that they don't just slip in. Um, so we're gonna trim all this excess off, but we're gonna we gotta leave about we're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch yeah. the whole way around. Like you look around Basically you, you leave enough to do a glue tab. Let's do the easy ones first. Let's start on one of the back windows. Actually here we'll start on this back window. You need about a quarter of an inch down at the bottom there and on the sides. So we're just gonna do about a quarter of an inch the whole way around. That gives you enough glue tab. And this is really thin. So we're just gonna kind of score, do multiple light cuts. So this stuff's so thin, I might as well just make it one cut instead of multiple, because I missed my line, but. Yeah, let's see how it fits. So like I said, these tabs don't really, you know, obviously you don't see them, so I'll pop it in here. Oh, it's perfect. There we go. Yeah. All right, so we got that guy all cut up. He looks great. Uh, he fits perfect. We're going to get the rest all cut up and fit in there before we get the glue out so we can just glue them all together. Let's go work on this one now. So the door, or the window, I should say, with the hinge, you can see those screws. We're going to have to cut two little notches out so the window slips around that. All right, so we got the window fitting pretty good. We had to make two kind of marks for notches for the hinge screws. So we're gonna do about like that. It's perfect. Yay. All right, looks good. Oh, it looks really good. It fits, it fits in there nice and snug. Very nice. Cool. All right, same as the same as this side. This was the hard side because we had the hinge. Same thing. Number two, three, number three. <laughs> number three, let's see if it fits. All right, that one fits good. One more. All right, guys, let's test fit the last window here. Cool, now I'm happy with that. All right, everybody, we got all the windows cut up. They fit in. Three of them fit perfect. This, this one on this side, the big one on this side is a little tight, but it fits. You just gotta kind of force it in. I think it's just the window mold, but it, it works, it totally works. All right, let's glue them, and then we're gonna put some tape to just let it dry overnight. All right, so we got all the windows glued in. You can see all the blue tape. It's just kind of holding it. Uh, canopy glue, you gotta let dry overnight. So we're gonna let that dry overnight. We'll be back in the morning. All right, out here the next day, let's check on these windows and the glue. I think it's looking pretty good. You can see we got just a couple little white spots, still wet glue, but for the most part, it's dry. Those will be dry in a couple hours here, but we're gonna pull the tape and uh, see how these look. All right, there's all the tape off of the windows. I think they look really good for the most part, you know. Mm -hmm. no, you can see they're nice and tight. Yep. Sound like a drum. Great, let's move on. 
All right, guys, time to drill the propeller. So we have a JC Super Props. This is a scale propeller made for the X-Cub. And uh, we have a 23 by 10. Uh, this comes from Aircraft International down in Florida. Um, they have a bunch of different pitches. And uh, we chose 23 by 10. Hopefully it'll get us the RPM we want. So you're gonna need a drill jig. So we have the DLE drill jig. This is pretty much mandatory for drilling these propellers. Otherwise you're gonna get your holes all messed up. Here's the part number. It uh, says it's for a DLE 55, but it's the same bolt pattern for a DLE 61. So you're definitely gonna need this, guys. So just, we'll open it up here. It's real simple. It's just a big honking metal block and a bolt. We'll With show some you. washers. Yeah, and some washers. I'll show you how to hook that up in a second. A couple things to talk about on the engine first. So you don't just drill these, these holes at a random position. Um, you need to find where compression starts on- Right before compression starts. Right before compression starts on your engine. So we've noticed on the DLE, and I don't know if this is how it's made every time, but it makes sense. The magnet is right before the hull sensor. So the magnet is right at the top. Another way that you can confirm you're right before the compression starting is you can see the piston coming down. It's right when the exhaust port closes, that's when your compression starts. And that's where your magnet, right at the top. So you want, that is where you want the engine at. So you want the propeller at a one o'clock position here. So we'll slip this on, keeping your magnet right at the top. You know the holes are still up and down, left and right. And you want your propeller at basically one o'clock. So what do you think, Mary? Is that about a one? There, okay. One o'clock, that looks good. Yeah. That looks good. So you want it at one o'clock. The reason you want it like that is because when you're hand propping this, you want to get a full, a full stroke, you know, a full pass. Now let, let's say your propeller was right here and you're only pushing it. You're only putting able to push it this much. So it might not be enough to, to start the airplane. So you want it all the way over here so you can push, you know, a good, you know, over 90 degrees. Yeah, create some momentum. Yeah. So we're gonna mark with our silver Sharpie on this propeller here. We're gonna put a line right at the top where that magnet is, okay? So basically like that. That lets us know that we want one of these holes right by our silver Sharpie mark, okay? So let's take this off, put this on, top of the propeller, mm -hmm. you got the nub goes in, Line up the hole. Yep. Take your bolt from the back. We're gonna start it here. Find your hole or your line you made. So that looks in line. You're gonna hold it. And tighten this down, make sure it's still all good. We'll snug this up pretty good. There. Now when we drill these holes, it matches this hole pattern. So we're on the drill press here. We got a nice flat block of wood in here. Drill a 5 eighths hole in your wood, just a relief hole. You don't have to go all the way through. It's just so this bolt hole, this bolt can kind of ride in there. And then the prop can sit flush on your wood, okay? The drill bit we have in here is a 13 64ths. Um, or a five millimeter. So we don't have a five millimeter bit, but it's 13 64ths is extremely close and it works great. We are gonna start drilling these holes. And after you drill your first hole, they want you to put one of the, the bolts in there just kind of as a anti-rotation pin. So let me go grab one of those, those bolts. All right, so we got our screw here, or sorry, bolts we can put in there after our first hole. So we got one hole done. Let me get the vacuum here. Okay. Now there's gonna be a little bit of wood burrs on the back. So a good trick is to just take an oversized bit and use it kind of like a uh, like a little chamfer. 
So you want to vacuum up all your wood dust every time, and you want this propeller to sit flush on the on your block every time. You don't want any potential, you know, variation there. So now we're gonna get that first pin, and we're gonna put it in here. Just holds it. That way it cannot rotate now. And we're just gonna go around and do the rest. All right, all the holes are drilled. Let's go see how it fits. All right, everybody, so the propeller holes look great, but we need to address the spinner back plate holes. So out of the box, the spinner back plate is set up for a propeller that's at nine and three. We went with, you know, a one o'clock position. So when we mount our propeller the way we drilled it, it blocks the holes that mount the spinner. So we need it basically to rotate over to here. So what that means, is these four mounting bolts. We need them in the dead spots here. So we gotta take this same jig and we gotta drill in between, exactly in between those. So basically lining up with the spinner yeah. holes. Yeah, so we want where the spinner holes are, we want them in this line now. So we, we, we want the propeller at a one o'clock. So if you did it at nine and three, this would work right out of the box. Okay. So let's get this tightened up. The same jig works, however, you will need a shorter bolt. And you can see I had to stack a couple washers, otherwise it bottoms out, so just simple fix. All right, everybody, I think we got it pretty much 90. Looking good, let's tighten it up. So we got a four millimeter. It's good to me. Okay. So let's go over to the drill press, drill some new holes. All right, so we're gonna set it in the same little 5 8 relief cut we have so that nub kind of sits down, keep it flush on the wood. Got our safety goggles on because we are dealing with aluminum now. So I was going to do a dry fit here with the drill bit. Make sure it goes down nice. Yep, perfect. Let's go to town here. We got our vacuum ready to clean up the shavings at the end. All right, looks good. I'm just giving them all a little, little chamfer, get rid of any burrs on the inside. Just using a big drill bit, not putting any pressure on it, just spinning it. Cool, you can see I had to file off some burrs, but this is all hidden. Let's go take this off and see how it fits. All right, so we wanted it in line. So like that. So we got our magnet, magnet on the top. Let's get this on there. We got one, we got two. Okay, those are all looking good. Oh, you're missing the washer on the top one. <laughs> Killing me. That's wow. not my fault. Okay, so that's good enough for testing. Now you can see the spinner screws are visible. Before those two mounting screws, they were in line with the propeller. So when you put the spinner on, they didn't line up. So what I'm seeing already again is a fitment issue. So we're gonna have to relieve the spinner just a little bit right here. Yeah, we kind of knew that. Yeah, see how it's kind of pivoting? Mm -hmm. So just a teeny bit right here. That's not much at all, actually. I had to do quite a bit on the carbon cub. Something like that. So really not much. Let's start with that. All right, let's start with that. I'm gonna clean this up with a file. So I definitely took a good amount out, probably a millimeter on each side. All right, let's see if this bad boy fits. All right, clips on nice. There it goes. So it clipped into the ring. Let's see if the holes line up. Yep, they're holes. Perfect. Okay. So that fits good. We had to kind of, you know, dremel out a little bit. Now it looks a little funny, this prop in the spinner, because this is a real thin propeller at right at the root there. But that's okay, 
because we have a, another propeller in a different pitch that we will probably be trying. Now you can see these Zors are fat boys. Look at the difference in the root. Yeah. So this fills really like fills out that spinner yeah. like it should. <laughs> but anyway, so this spinner will work for both propellers. It just looks a little funny with the skinnier one. But anyway, it works. So that pretty much wraps up the whole front. The only two things that we have to finish on this front are the new standoffs, which we addressed in the, the kind of the X Cub PSA video, and then the exhaust. We had to order some new exhaust we have coming. So the DLE exhaust pipe was sticking out too far on the side and it just wouldn't work with the cow. So we ordered a pits style muffler, you know, in the back that goes in the back. So we're waiting on a couple parts to really 100% 100 finish the front but it's pretty done it looks great that's going to be the end of this video guys we're gonna we probably have one more build video i think of just kind of buttoning things up and a couple small things but for the most part we're looking good we had a little minor setback with the standoffs but we're over it we're moving on it's looking great thanks for watching everybody as always comment uh, if you have any questions we really appreciate it and we love helping you guys if you have any questions but thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, if you find this helpful. And we'll see you next time.